Let's Not Meet by Princess Siren. To preface this, I love to drive, I like long hour drives to nowhere with no real destination in mind. Just me, my music, and the road ahead of me. Living in Nebraska, I'd often take these back roads or lonely highways cutting through the countryside or small towns, and eventually get into cities. I'd usually take these drives at night since there's less traffic and less to worry about. I've done this since I've had my license four or five years ago. I've never once had any issue or any real run-in with trouble. That was until a few nights ago, of course. For reference, I'm relatively small. I'm a 22-year-old male. And as I stated before, I usually take these long and lonely drives alone. They're a good way to clear my head when I'm stressed, upset, or overwhelmed. Or to get a plan together to sort out my personal issues. I've also done these long drives when I was living with my parents and now that I've moved out, I really don't get the urge to take these drives anymore. I'm in a much better place mentally, really. However, on the night this event took place, I was feeling pretty overwhelmed, stressed and anxious with a cluster full of personal issues I'd really rather not get into. I felt stressed and irritable around my, my girlfriend. I couldn't focus on anything else and I decided to get in my car and clear my head of course. My girlfriend was understanding and told me to be careful and not to be gone for too long, too terribly long, she said. Since it was getting late, I agreed, gave her a kiss and said goodbye. I drove around the city for about 30 minutes, but I was still feeling on edge about everything transpiring in my personal life, so I decided to drive further north down to those familiar dark winding one lane highways. I kept the car at a steady 65 miles per hour, taking the turns at a slower pace just in case a deer jumped around the corner or something. I was admiring the vast empty darkness of the snow-caped fields. It was honestly kind of creepy being all alone with no cars in sight, and seemingly the middle of nowhere. There was a few houses miles back in the lightless road covered in snow. It was something out of a scary movie. I half expected to see a ghost pop up in my rearview mirror or someone pop out of the woods or along the horizon. It was super hard to see that night, and the only light that was coming from anywhere was my headlights, and even I strained to see past the inkiness of night. Now, I'm not that great at keeping promises to myself, but I did tell myself if I found the familiar roundabout, I would take that, make my way through a small town, or go straight to the city and home. That roundabout I'm talking about is still 15 to 25 minutes away. Other than my imagination imagining the worst to happen, I had nothing really to worry about. There was no motorist on the road or I didn't see any deer, so no concerns, right? Boy, was I wrong. As I was taking another corner, I saw a car off in the distance with its hazard lights on. It was a dark colored sedan, part of it on the road, part of it on the shoulder. Its driver's side door was wide open, and as I got closer to get by, I noticed from the driver's side door, blood. It was weird, I didn't see anyone out there, and I was the only vehicle. Now, I'm in the country, so cell phone reception spotty at best, and you couldn't even find reception if you prayed. Which was the case when I pulled out my cell phone. Huh, just my luck. I'm a lonesome guy, out on a country road. No cell phone reception near a vacant car that looks like someone was attacked in it. I'm no dummy. I watch countless episodes of Investigation Discovery, Criminal Minds, and read far too many crime books to know that this is bad. In danger. It has that written all over it. Even with all that knowledge, there was still a small part of me that wanted to help the person that was in that vehicle. That something terrible had happened to them. These roads don't get a lot of traffic. I mean, damn, the only reason I'm out here is because I'm clearing my head. These roads fall below freezing temperatures, and they can really be in danger. And if someone was really hurt or in trouble, it's me. I'm the only one that can help them. Now, I'm not going to lose years of training just like that. 
I still erred on the side of caution. So I crept by the car, slowly. I rolled down my passenger window and turned off my music and yelled out, Hey, is anyone out there? Of course, no response. What if they're passed out somewhere? What if they can't hear me? I wasn't about to get out of my car and go check for them. That was way too scary. So I thought to myself, what if I just go down the road, wait for reception? I'll call the first person that comes to mind and maybe they'll help. So then I try again. Hey, are you out there? Are you okay? There was still. There was silence for a beat. And then I heard it. Yeah. It was a person. Oh, I was relieved. I was even about ready to get out my car. And then I noticed... I noticed something. Three things. Three things, actually, simultaneously. I drove a little bit further up and I noticed... There's no damage on the hood, no damage on the car at all. Which is weird considering there's all this blood in the car. Like, where's the crash? And then I saw something out of the corner of my eye. I looked in my rearview mirror and someone popped out from behind the sedan that crashed. They were making their way towards my car fast. It all hit me at once like the Titanic hit ice. The person wasn't injured, they didn't have any blood on them and they were wearing a mask. Not the type of mask you wear for COVID or you go and skiing in, just a mask. They were holding something. I couldn't see it past all the snow. It was long and from the looks of it, maybe a crowbar. Now I don't need to tell you that I slammed on my gas and got out of there like a bat out of hell. My heart was about ready to beat out of my chest and my body was trembling, ready to faint. My window was down and my music was turned off. I can hear a man behind me, but I couldn't understand what he was saying. I wasn't trying to find out. I still one more glance behind me in my rearview mirror. He's still standing there with the weapon in his hand. And another man comes out the side of the brush. Same mask. No blood. No injuries. Now I probably broke every speeding law that night, but I made it to that roundabout. Made it in town and parked at our local Walmart. Thank God, there's still cars here. Maybe from the stalkers stock in the store at night, but still someone around. I proceeded to have a full meltdown. As soon as I could pull myself together, I called our police department. It was a friend on the other line. He was concerned for me. Asked if I was okay, asked if I was followed, all the common questions, of course. He said since it was out of city jurisdiction, he couldn't really do anything. He had to call the local sheriff, maybe go out there and check it out. I stayed on the phone with him as well as texting my girlfriend. She was concerned for me, but I had to stay on the phone with the cops. That was probably the most stressful 10 minutes of my life. Looking over my shoulder, looking in my rearview mirror, making sure I wasn't followed, making sure I didn't see anyone come out of the brush. I waited. I waited. And then I saw a familiar police cruiser pull into the parking lot. I gave the police my statement and they assured me that they would get someone out there to the location I gave them. They asked me about details and then they asked me what the license plate number was. It didn't really occur to me. I was too panicked. I couldn't see it. All the police had to go off was a dark sedan and two guys in masks. After I gave the police my statement, I went home with my girlfriend. We went to sleep and I didn't really sleep much. It was one of the most dreadful nights of my life. I was terrified. They could be outside right now. They could be watching me through a window, waiting to finish the job. What if I had gotten out of my car? What a... What would have happened to me? Thanks for listening to that creepy pasta. It's your boy Okina. Please remember to like, subscribe, turn on that notification. It does help me push more content. And remember, keep it creepy.
Be careful. There's people out there.